Hi, my name's Anina, and um, I'm thrilled to be able to bring you the first of the Lent Reflections um, from St Melitus. I was an ordinand there and left about a year and a half ago to start my curacy, um, which I'm in the last year of now. So um, I'm going to read the scripture. Uh, the readings are taken from the lectionary um, for Lent. And this one is from Daniel 9, and it's verses 3 to 6, and then 17 to 19. Then I turned to the Lord God to seek an answer by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and made my confession, saying, Ah, oh Lord, great and awesome God, keeping covenant and steadfast love with those who love you and keep your commandments. We have sinned and done wrong, acting wickedly and rebelled, turning aside from your commandments and ordinances. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes and our ancestors and to all the people of the land. Now, therefore, O oh our God, listen to the prayer of your servant and to his supplication and for your sake. Lord, let your face shine upon your desolated sanctuary. Incline your ear, O oh my God, and hear. Open your eyes and look at our desolation and the city that bears your name. We do not present our supplication before you on the ground of our own righteousness, but on the ground of your great mercies. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, listen and act and do not delay. For your own sake, O oh my God, because your city and your people bear your name. So I've been thinking a lot recently about the future of the church and I feel very hopeful and excited about it too. And I don't know if you saw this um, about a month ago in the um, Sunday Telegraph, can the Church of England survive COVID? Well, in our passage, um, there's a group of God's people wondering if they can survive, what the future of their, them as a group called together by God. And they're in exile um, because they've sinned. And um, one of them, Daniel, uh, is figuring out that this might continue, this might last, this exile in Babylonian captivity might last for another 70 years. He's looked back, he's looked at the words of Jeremiah the prophet, and he's probably thinking, like many of us at the moment in COVID lockdown, I can't do this for much longer. Certainly not another 60 or whatever years. And so what he does is he addresses God with humility. He worships and he confesses both his own individual sin and he repents on behalf of his people. And then the bit that jumped out at me. Look with favour on your desolate sanctuary. And what popped into my head was, God is your sanctuary, is your church now desolate? Yes, it's closed in COVID, but through this scripture, I found it so encouraging. And at the beginning of Lent, like Daniel, an encouragement to stop, truly stop and reflect and perceive what God is doing. Looking at scriptures, looking back at old words and promises like he did with Jeremiah's prophecy. And then we address him in worship and how powerful our confession is. A reminder to us that we are not helpless because there is power in private and representational or sort of corporate um, confession and repentance. And I love this verse from the passage. 
This is God's nature as we come to him afresh. As soon as you began to pray, Daniel, a word went out. And so God hears our prayers and he gives us an answer that we can understand. So I bless you all and encourage you, encourage us all in this the beginning of this Lent to stop and listen and perceive. In Daniel's um, time, it was called the evening sacrifice. So let us make our sacrifices of um, perceiving again, God, what are you doing in this time? What are you doing in your church? And how would you have us pray? Bless you.